All right, the second area we need to check, the second most important is our brake pads. Uh, once you know you can get eyeballs in here, either through this direction, change the bike to find that correct direction. You're trying to look at the thickness of the pad or you can come in from the top, um, but just kind of continue to move your eye around to see what makes the best sense to get your eyes in there. If you don't know what to look for, obviously the best thing to do is just to take your wheel off, but always downshift, get your chain to the smallest, cog which is all the way to the far right if you're sitting on the bike that's going to allow the derailleur spring to relax and it's also going to move the derailleur over to the right making room for the cassette to drop straight down we're still going to run into it cassette's still going to run into the derailleur but we got a little more space um, always hang on to the wheel flip that open if you got a quick release in the rear that's all you got to do flip it open it's ready to fall um, no need to loosen or unscrew it um, you may have to do that with the front because the front has a more metal and safety uh, built into it, but not the most rears. Actually, I haven't run into any of that that do have that. So this is ready to drop down, but now I'm hitting the derailleur. So I'm just going to turn this guy back. It's going to open it up. Wheel's going to drop right down. So once that wheel's out of the way, we have good eyeballs we can see either from the top or from this backside. Uh, sometimes the one on the left nearest the frame, that could still be blocked by part of the, uh, the housing of the caliper or the um, spacer. So if it's still tough to see, just go ahead and take your brake pads out so you can get a peek at them. Um, typically, new brake pads are coming in about two millimeters thick. We wanna replace these when you get down to you know, almost just about half a millimeter or a, a little better. So this one here, this one's giving us a silver, silver backing. So all this piece right here, that's our metal. This can also be black and it can also be very dirty and everything blends into the same color. Um, this right here, that's my thickness of material. So I'm, I'm running pretty close to uh, a new pad. I probably have like three quarters of life left or so. Um, so if we can determine that when the wheel's on, then that's, that's all you need to do. But like I said, you could always take your pads out at the same time, but good pad thickness there. So these are Shimano's, they're SLX, happens to be a four piston. Uh, yes, very uncommon to find this on a cyclocross or gravel bike, unless you're a big dude, large bike, XL, you're you know two, pushing 200, 250, 300. Um, then I could see a four piston in here. But even the rear is pretty rare to have a four piston back here. The rear just locks up so easily. But um, I had these lying around, got pulled off another bike and I wanted to experiment. Um, I am running a Shimano uh, shifter lever combo set. But to get this guy off, there is a little clip here. It's like a metal spring, almost like a bobby pin. So it's gonna split, stretch open, and then close again. So you can use your finger, but I'm gonna use this pick just to give you a little more clarification. And I'm gonna hold this real tight with these, my finger and the pick. Hold very tight, because once it breaks loose, they do like to jump out of your hand. And that slides off just like that. So there is a groove on that pin where this goes back on. All right, so once that's free, we got this, basically it's a screw. This one happens to have a screw, very similar to a through axle that goes through. It's threaded on this end, and this takes a three millimeter hex, and probably about three or four revolutions, this thing should come free, and this will slide right out. Give it a few more turns. If you don't have a screw type here, then it could be a cotter pin. So that pulls right out. So that's keep making sure the brakes don't want to lift up and pop out that way. Once that's out, these brakes are ready to come out. We have one, two, in the middle is a spring, so it's a sandwich. You can take it out as a unit. This particular one has these plastic fins on top, so it can only go out up direction. These fins are just cooling, keeps this whole area clean, or cool, cool. Uh, heat is the enemy for all disc brakes. We heat up here, we're gonna heat up our fluid. Uh, fluid will not do its job, and we'll basically have something called brake fade, where power will drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and sandwich these. I'm gonna press together, pull up, and everything will come out as a unit. And you can see the metal pad here. So if you don't have cooling fins, you're just gonna have metal pad and a little handle. It's almost like a ping pong paddle. And these are left and right specific. It will say L on one side, R on the other, and your spring may have the same idea too. So 
Good to inspect. You can make sure there's no grooves. Everything should look nice and flat. These look dark in color and that's just normal grayish. Uh, originally have a metallic sheen to it. But um, you can also tell if your pads or your caliper is, set, is sitting correctly. If we're sitting too high, we're going to have a weird groove. If we're sitting too low, it's going to catch the rotor incorrectly. Not a huge deal, but it, you're just not getting 100% pad contact to your rotor. All right, so I got a new pad. You can kind of see the thickness there. And then we have the used ones here, or the ones that are in use. So overall in good shape. Uh, the main thing with this is once these pads get worn, this spring sits basically outlines your brake pad. So on the edges here, if that pad gets too low, we could start hitting this metal spring here. And it may not be a really loud noise. It will be metal on metal. You, you might notice it, you might not. Um, so if this starts making contact with our rotor, too much of that could actually start to melt onto your rotor and then we're going to ruin our rotor so not only we got to replace your pads now you got to replace your rotor so always good to get eyeballs in there just depends how much you ride uh, really depends you know when you're supposed to replace everything it's like the million dollar question i get all the time when do i replace tires when do i repack my bearings uh, when do i replace um, brake pads changing fluid in your in your um, hydraulic brakes uh, it's just it's all depending on how much you're riding, conditions you're riding in. This guy, so visually we always have to get eyeballs on this. We just don't want to get too low. So that, that's an easy one. The chain, get your chain checker. You can physically put a tool on it and check your wear. Um, other things like brake fluid, we're just trying to get an idea. Either you're keeping track of hours. Hours is probably pretty good, um, maybe better than, than mileage. Um, and then, you know, are you doing 50 road, 50% 50 road, 50% dirt? Are you riding in dusty conditions? Are you going through lots of water, creeks, rain, things like that? Lots of descending, heavy on the brakes. Uh, those things are going to warrant, you know, a quicker, quicker change. But, um, and then it, it depends probably too what type of brake pad material you have. I have, um, and this one on the back side, it'll say metal. And this is a, for Shimano, so you can have resin, which is similar to organic. Those two could be in the same um, category. Bit of a softer material, so it gives you a, a softer feel when you're braking, a little better modulation. They say it's quieter. Um, and then you have metal or metallic where it's got more bits in there. So metallic's gonna be maybe a little sharper on the grab, um, a little more sensitive, longer lasting, better in wet conditions. Uh, they say it could be a little noisier, but I don't really notice uh, a problem on that. And it may de be dependent on your rotor too. Your motor may say, rotor may say resin only. So far I've only seen that on um, that logo writing on Shimano stuff on maybe lower mid grade stuff. I tend to like the metallic because I just, I want that sharp bite. So going back in here, just check the back of your pads. If it says, if it says L or R, then pay attention to that. If you're sitting on the bike, pointing that direction. This is my left. Right side would be drivetrain where your chain is. So this one does say R and L. So I'm gonna make sure I get that correct. Check your spring as well. This one does not say R or L. But get that metal outline around the brake pad. And they just, if, if they're being a little ornery, just kind of slap them together. Sometimes you don't have to be that sensitive. And then just get your angle correct. Now this one, I'm not pushing my piston cups back in. If I had to, it would be because I'm putting in new brake pads. As your pads start to wear, the cups that are inside this caliper start to go inward and they'll stay inward as, as your pad wears. It makes up for that uh, missing pad material. So in a sense, they're self-adjusting. Um, this case, I'm putting the same pads in there so the piston cups are where, right where they should be. New pads, I'm pushing those cups back in. Use something plastic. Um, some calipers use uh, ceramic cups, which could be somewhat fragile. You're just going in on the inside, leaning left or right, trying to hit both sides, pushing them in evenly, get them flush again with the inside of the body, making space for those new pads. But once that's in there, so those slide in pretty easily. And then we're just putting our screw back and then just as pushes through. If you're a little stuck, just kind of jiggle and push as you're, as the, the screw as you're jiggling and pushing. Just realign everything. Of 
course, this one's giving me a little issue because, okay, standing in the right position and then screw that back together. And then this does not have to be tied. I'm just gonna go very gentle, made gentle contact and just a real easy snugging. And then you're gonna put your little spring back on the other side. And then when you're working with these really small parts, maybe um, work somewhere and when, if it falls, it's you're falling on a big piece of carpet or um, a foot pad, something like that that's gonna catch and not let it bounce and take off across the room and hide underneath something. But that'll just spring back on and you're good to go.